What's good, YouTube? It's your girl Jess. We're back in action. I found like the gayest fucking outfit I could have put on to date uh, because this is the ultimate lesbian starter pack for all y'all who ever need to know everything and anything about being a lesbian and just coming out and this is it. Let's get right to it. The rule of thumb is if you're gay, you can make it work. That's pretty much it. Flannels, snapbacks, chains, rings, jewelry, baggy clothes, tight clothes, Doc Martens, chucks, Tims, you can wear heels. It doesn't really matter, honestly. Everything goes. You can also need things like nail clippers, very important. Cutting your hair short, making it longer, growing it out putting on a man bun. Let's say you don't have any of these options. Well, your first option should always be Goodwill, because a lot of these options you can get for cheap, and most of us are cheap as fuck anyways. But if you're not that cheap, next you need to look into these LGBT-based clothing brands who were either owned by or made for the community as a whole. So we got Don Vajan. She makes amazing custom clothing out of her own place in LA. She's dope. You got Nishibu. She makes custom distressed dad hats that have like gay ass logos on it about pussy, about being gay, about strapping. You got Zoda Chinu, which is unorthodox backwards, but she makes the androgynous tees. You got the Naughty brand, uh, also an, a queer based owner. Reject Society, which you got three queer based lesbian owners doing their damn thing, and I've been working with them for a while. You got Stuzo, based out in LA, two lesbian based owners. You got Tomboy X, that makes underwear, bras. You got Andro Swag, based out in Australia. You got Jag Co, based out in, uh, New York hand make stuff more dapper style boy society uh, they got a whole boy society box she's a queer based owner based in uh, the bay area and then you got panda clothing i'm wearing right now uh rare breed tea cop yourself some swag and if you want to be really gay you got to really support your queer based owners and if you really want to be gay gay you start your own queer based business speaking of icons you got all these icons around the world around the internet all these things that you need to study these are mainly queer people of color who have been doing their damn thing and i respect them a lot so y'all need to go check them out if you're not following them already. Uh, Instagram, you need to be on Instagram if you're gay. It's just it's how it is because everybody who's gay is on Instagram. And if you're gay, you don't really have people that are like you in real life. So you need to find people on Instagram to go follow and fangirl over. Amber's Closet, huge inspiration for me. Huge inspiration for a lot of people. She started with making videos in her closet and does stuff like I do. Just telling y'all how to be gay. Got Lena Waithy. She's doing her amazing job in... Uh, film and TV. I first found her on Master of None and she did a uh, episode about her being gay. Y'all need to check that out. It's very important. Ma. Mm -hmm. I'm gay. You what? I'm gay. I've always been gay. I'm still the same person. I'm still your daughter. Nothing's changed. She also directs and produces her own shows now. She's doing amazing things for the community, and she's also uh, swagged out as fuck. And she wears those same brands that I was just discussing. You got Young Easy. She's like killing the Instagram comedy game. Here are your terms and conditions of being a lesbian. Are you ready for your vocabulary? Yes. Here we go. Fem, pillow princess, starfish, girly girl, stem, femigrants, confused, tomboy, stud, dumb, touch me not, touch me sometimes, and the one word we never speak of, the D word. Dick. Dyke, Haley, Dyke. You got Carter the Body, everybody know Carter the Body, if you don't know Carter the Body, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. She also does exotic dancing. Young Ame, Young Ame's killing the game. Uh, really good with her lyrics, y'all already know all her songs, if you don't know her songs. What are you doing? Uh, Artie Fitz is doing her own damn thing. Super unique looking. She brings a whole new style to the game. Foxy Hot Mess, which is her best friend. She also does YouTube videos. A lot of instructional, very sarcastic, blunt videos that y'all need to check out. You need the finish him Mortal Kombat of vibrators. And that's what this is. Um, but you know, if you want to take fingering to the next level, you can go to town with this. Kaylani, gotta know Kaylani. She makes a billion songs out there on Spotify, everything right now. Um, also openly gay and talks and sings about being gay on her songs. Uh, Haley Kyoko, she's doing her damn thing. She's openly gay as well. You got Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose has always been out there, based in Australia, and she's, you know, been making people confused for a very long time. Saya is a stud bass rapper out in LA, killing the game as well. You got uh, Ellen, of course. Everybody knows Ellen Show. You don't know the other show, you you tripping. You got Amanda Nunez, who just won the UFC championship uh, for females. You got Whitney Mixter, who is a star of The Real L Word. She's also running events like Crave and things like that, partnering with them. Uh, Kate Moaning was in the L Word series. Makes people very confused as well. Lacey Green, which has helped me started getting out into the scene and getting to know what pussy really is about. And then you got Hannah Hart, of course. 
Um, Hannah Hart has made a lot of videos about her coming out story. Um, I noticed you have a rather large menswear watch. Yeah, it was just because it was cheap. It was from Target. Mm -hmm. Love Target. It's also like a statement piece. Like the statement's like, I like to tell time for sex with women. From those people that I mentioned, there's also shows that y'all need to check out and these are highly necessary because they will initiate you to the gay world. First series, The L Word. If y'all have never seen The L Word, it is the gayest show I've ever seen and is still the gayest show out there ever. And you just get a bunch of sex, a bunch of humor, and a bunch of girls who are always together somehow magically friends and there's a bunch of drama which everybody knows that gay people love drama. Then they made The Real L Word. It's more like a Jersey Shore spinoff of the L word. It's a little bit more ratchet, but you got a little bit more of a relatable experience. You got also movies on Netflix. Most queer movies on Netflix suck because it's just white women with very awkward experiences and it's hard to watch and it just makes me cringe. But you got some who can actually act and actually make lesbian sex and lesbian relationships look like how they actually are. Blue is the warmest color. That one's very intense, but it does show you what a toxic relationship can be like. Blow Her Mouth is kind of new. That one has a stud in it. The Fosters is a show. Two queer-based uh, moms who foster children. We got Orange is New Black. Everybody needs to watch Orange is New Black. If you haven't seen Orange is New Black, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but there's a lot of lesbians in there. Uh, Wentworth is the Australian version of Orange is New Black. A lot better series in my opinion. So after you spent at least a whole month studying these people and following these people, now you need to start going out to these events and you start meeting people and you need to start spending your money on those events because they're a lifetime worth of memories and they will last forever because they're so gay and they're so much fun. There's just so much fun. There's so much life. Pride. Everybody knows pride. Pride is around the world. You can go from, I think, like spring till fall. There's also the Dinosaur and Crave. They're both based in Palm Springs, California, in the desert, in a hotel. You got pool, you got tons of girls, and you got tons of ass and tons of titties. People just wilding out, drunk, and it's just three days long. It's great. You got Sweet Heat in Florida. That shit is amazing. You also got Bait in New York City during Pride. You got P-Town, which is based in uh, Provincetown, Massachusetts, which is really up north. That's the place to go in Cape Cod. And it's a women's weekend, Aqua Girl. And then you got Unleashed um, DC and a bunch of other events during Pride. And everybody knows if you're gay, you need to learn the slang, the activities, and everything else that comes along with it. U-Hauling is known as the queer way to meet somebody, fall in love really fucking fast, and then move in together, and then realize that shit was the absolute worst idea you could have ever done. And then you laugh about it later. Me and my girl went on three dates. So I called up for the U Haul rope. Um, sex is a highly gay activity and it's highly uh, underrated because we lesbians don't like to talk about it with each other for some reason and we also don't really express how fucking amazing it really is. Having multiple dozens more than that orgasms is very common and it is very possible. Toxic relationships, none of us want them. We all get them because all of us are fucked up low key. A lot of us have abuse from childhood. We have neglected parents. We have people who don't really accept us as people. We have daddy issues. We have mommy issues. We have all the issues. So just beware. But also it's kind of necessary to have it. And I feel like we don't want it, but it happens anyways because a lot of us, like I said, are fucked up. Drama. When you have a lot of women together all the time who are friends with one another in a space that is already highly selective with women in one space in a town that you specifically live in or even on social media, there's drama. Drama is always going to be there and it will stay there and you got to get used to it because you're a girl and that's what girls fucking do. Another common aesthetic is being shy and awkward. That is always going to be there in this community. Just get used to it. And more often than not, you're going to have to come out to ignorant people. And of course, they're nosy. You get used to it. Then you take it with a grain of salt. And that forces a lot of us to be strong and over the top defensive and kind of ignorant and because a lot of y'all love to test their damn patience. And we are tired of it. We're really tired. I'm exhausted. You're gonna always hear, especially in a gay space. Yes! 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 Yes, girl! Want that shit, bitch? Yes, ho! And if it is a gay space and you don't hear that, there's something wrong. And no matter if you're a feminine or masculine or whatever lesbian you are, you're gonna always be fetishized by hetero, cis, disgusting men. It's just inevitable. And I wanna say about 95% of the lesbian culture is loving Netflix, loving naps, and loving uh, cuddling. Most of these girls out here eat that shit up. Lesbians be tired, they're tired as hell.
they don't do shit, but they're tired for some reason. They're always tired. These attributes also include being too visible or not visible enough. You can look like me or you can look like that. You could either be discriminated in public because people know that you're gay or you could be like this and get discriminated because people find out that you're gay. And of course, getting into relationship includes you have to make a YouTube channel. People just love that shit. Lesbians eat that shit up. That's just how it works. 